11 o'clock miss, sir. Jones. Then the final is Sergeant Gatling and Private Snuffy Smith. Never seed such a gun. Awkward as a pig in a gate. If I could use my old squirrel gun, that's what I'm gonna do. Private Smith, I've explained repeatedly that you must use the regulation arm. Lieutenant, I'll cut my baby chief on that old squirrel gun. Go ahead, Sergeant. It's a bullseye, sir. They're tied at 160 apiece. And each has one more shot. Yes, sir. Snuffy Smith. Could shoot a squirrel animal off the tip top of a pine tree. It's a three o'clock miss, sir. Score is still 160. And Sergeant Gatling has one more shot. Yes, sir. Sergeant. <coughs> Private Smith. Couldn't draw a bead on a barn side. Stand back there until Sergeant Gatling is fired. It's a bullseye, sir. Sergeant Gatling scores 161 to 160 for Private Smith. Congratulations, Sergeant. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, boys. Good work, Sergeant. man in the whole United States Army. And that revenue sergeant, all on account of one duck, got me tending mules. Huh. If it weren't for the Army, it'd be the rip snorting a squall of fight never seen in these parts. Before the war, when we was were in the big smokies, the sergeant wore worn winning no shooting medals. We were too busy dodging. Revenue a sergeant sneaking about like a ring tailed tiger. Shiftless, low down, worthless sergeant vomit. Oh, bodacious, underwitted shit. Oh, you. Underwitted idiot. Stupid old shiftless old worthless old sergeant. Sergeant. Sergeant Gatling, how can you allow you to get in that condition? Well, I was. Have you no respect for the medal just awarded you? Yes, sir. What do you think of privates like this man here will think of you if you set such an example? Well, I'm sorry. Now go change that uniform. Nothing. Uh, nothing. I got a letter for you. Oh, I was uh, looking for my reading spectacles. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> yeah, they'd be right here. Yeah. I've got to clean them, because they got kind of dirty and, uh, uh, oh, broke again. They never was no good. <laughs> Snuffy, how come you never learned how to read or write? 
Book Browning never shot a deer. No, sir. You want me to read it for me? I sure do. My dear adopted soldier man. That air me. I simply must meet you, so I am coming up next visitor's day. Send me your photograph so that I can recognize you when I get there. <laughs> How did you like the big layer cake I sent you? As ever, Eliza Murdoch. Big layer cake? It only fetched 17 cents. Yeah, but what about those two boxes of cigars and the silk scarf and the gold pen and pencil set? Oh, only got 10 or 12 dollars for the whole kit and caboodle on them. I know, but it's still a good source of extra revenue, and if you don't send her the photograph, it might stop. And if I do send her the photograph... Yes, sir. You see, this rocket appears to have some very unique features. Its performance in flight is controlled entirely from the ground by radio wave. Mm. It's about ready for demonstration to the War Department. You'll be in charge of the detail. Well, how about you going, yes, sir? Oh, uh, Sergeant. By the way, take Private Snuffy Smith along. He knows that country. Well, I don't think that'll be necessary, sir. I know the country, too. Uh, but he was born and raised there. Knows every hideout. Probably used them all. I'm sure he'll be very helpful. Yes, sir. Your adopted soldier, Snuffy Smith. I changed my mind about sending the picture. Good, let's see it. Jeepers, don't you know that's uh, being bad luck? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here, sit down. I'll read you what I've got. Oh, oh. Dear lady, your many presents received. Corporal and Bruce. thank you for... Oh. Corporal Bruce, get your things together. We're leaving in the morning. Full equipment. Where are we going, Sarge? Up to the big Smokies. The big Smokies? Yes, uh, special guard duty. We'll leave it in the morning. Uh, are we going anywhere near to Hooten Harbor? Or uh, we'll be uh, stationed at Saddleback Lodge. Saddleback Lodge, I remember that. I took Lodge up there 30, 30, 40 years ago to see it. I'll take you and six other men. Oh, balls of fire! I want to take uh, Farrell, uh, Wilson, Dixon, Freddy, uh, Jones, and uh, Boscovich. Oh, shucks, there ain't a one of them men what knows the great Smokies. I want to get men that I can rely on. Oh. And I know those big Smokies like the back of my hand. Oh, you love it up there, Corporal. The dogwood blossoms are as big as cabbages. And the hood owls seem like canaries. The sergeant. Oh, I tell you, it's God's country. There's no place on earth like it. It's right next to heaven. That's the great Smokies. Sergeant. <laughs> well, I'll see you in the morning. Sergeant. Oh, would you like to go, Snuffy? Oh, I sure would. All right, I'll take you. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you, Sergeant. Oh, it's all right. The captain ordered me to anyhow. What the, the big ring-tailed vomit? He had me hypnotized. All right, you three, take the jeep up in front. What's oh, oh, all right, Carville, you get in here, and Missouri, get in here with me, and let's get going. Oh! Hurry. Oh! You, you, you underwitted idiot! How do you expect a fellow to sleep? Come on, come on, there's not room for you in here. No. But I have a special conveyance, all for you. Yes. You get all the privacy you want. Come yes. on. Yes. 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 Uh, Mr. Smith, allow me to present B-40, who will be your companion on the trip. You mean I have to drive that blue-nosed mule? See you at Saddleback Lodge, if and when you get there. The fire. If you weren't the sergeant, I'd shake your bones till they rattle like cowbells. Hey, let's go.
our stable this blue-nosed army mule. You can't put him in the barn. A king? The barn ain't for mules. Bulls of far. I never heard such goings on. Uh, who's the huddle keeper here? Barney Google. Barney Google. Barney Google? You mean my cousin Barney? A worthless, shiftless skunk? Why be? Over the on the lean to. Well, uh, tell the varmint Snuffy's here. Agent, Mr. Barney Google. Agent, Mr. Barney Google. Mm, come on, baby, that's fine. Here, take it. Take it, baby. Mr. Barney Google. Snuffy! Well, if it ain't a sight to make the buzzards happy, cousin Barney Google. Welcome to the lodge, Snuffy. Uh, how come you're up here on the Big Smokies? I'm half owner in a big adventure we've got up here. Well, I swallow. That must be why the general sent me. Uh, what be? It's in the barn. Come on, I'll show it to you. Yeah. You know, I've raised all the finances to build this big invention. Matter of several thousand dollars. Well, bust my khaki breeches. This is a radio-activated rocket operated by remote control. Yeah, any pumpkin head could see that. Professor James, Snuffy Smith was sent up here by the Army. Oh, yes. Uh, very nice of him. Uh, thank you. And this is Julie, the professor's daughter. A dash of the old stuff if I've ever seen one. <laughs> my jeepers. I never see such rosy jaws and bright eyeballs. Oh, thank you, Mr. Smith. Yeah, the general says to me, Snuffy, he says, I want you to go down there and guard that contraption. And then the general says to me, if you see any furnace sneaking about, don't leave enough of them to give the buzzards an argument. Well, I'm glad you're in charge, Mr. Yeah. Smith. Yeah, and I'm going to take charge of... Bird Smith. Go on and take care of that mule. You shipless skunk. I'm Sergeant Gatling in charge of detail. How do you do, Sergeant Gatling? I'm Barney Google. This is Professor James, and this is his daughter, Julie. The professor will explain the rocket to you. Yes. Well, you see, as the usual rocket goes through the air, the TNT and the nitroglycerin are brought together by a decapitator. Yes. But I use an electromagnetic wave. Uh, you don't seem to understand him. See, what he's trying to explain, I'll try to make a little clearer to you. You see, when the rocket goes up in the air and they have a little cost of cellar plate, it brings out all the combustion of the molecules going through the racer. And he doesn't just use a world of to base, he's set. And the molecules don't come back and across the straight. That's where the cattle even still need Fortinson. Ah, an improvement. Now, you see, don't get too near it, Sergeant, because if the rocket goes up in the boss's way, the states. Now, watch it, it'll catch, please. Hold this out. What a mule. He passed us on the road like a pursuit plane would. That's what we call him, P-40. Look, he isn't even out of breath. I want to talk to you. I want to tell you that I've sunk all my money in this rocket. Now I haven't got an asset in the world except spark plugs. You're on the witted idiot. Supposing the contraption won't fly. Well, that's what's got me worried. We interested the War Department. They're coming up to witness a trial flight. Now we discover that we need a new and more sensitive gyroscopic stabilizer. Google, you must have been behind the door when brains was passed out. Why don't you buy the gym pack what you be needing? It costs $500. $500? Mm. Uh, say, uh, Snuffy, you can't lay your hands on that amount, can you? No, no, of course not. Cousin, why don't you put Sparky up for sale? I did. Spark plug isn't appreciated. If and I could sweep together that much folding money, I would for the sake of the new United States and Kennedy. Thanks, Snuffy. Appreciate that. Where don't we put these cots? I'll check with the Sarge. I'm so sorry. Oh, I've never been hit so hard by a girl before. Now, I'm Corporal Jim Bruce, uh, sort of up here in charge of the guard detail, you might say. Oh, well, I'm Julie James. Well, I heard that Professor James had a beautiful daughter, but I never expected to find a Miss America, a movie star, and Julie James all in one dazzling picture. That's one nice thing about soldiers. They never exaggerate. You know, it's a funny thing. 
the way fate orders us around. Now, you take this order to bring these men up here. Well, I didn't think it was fate. I thought it was the captain. <laughs> when P-40 passed that jeep, wow. I bet he could beat anything on the road. What are they saying? Is that a racing mule? That blue-nosed vomit? I like a streak of lightning. Well, I passed the sergeant so fast, I could have hung my coat on his eyeball. All right, boys. Farrell, you guard the barn door. Dixon, you take him to the lodge. Yeah, I wonder where they picked up this worthless nag. He ain't worthless. He'll bring five bucks to some glue factory. Well, in that case, the glue factory would be stuck. Gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen that happens to be my thoroughbred spark plug. The fastest thing on four feet, aren't you, old boy? So you still think he's fast, eh, Barney? I know it. Important business interests have kept me from racing him at the moment. But spark plug is just spoiling for a race. Mr. Google, I wonder if you'd uh, consider a two-mile race with P-40. That's our mule. I presume you mean uh, for a purse? Well, I haven't got a purse, but I wouldn't mind making a little wager on my entry. Me too. I'll bet. My bets would have a less than $500. But Balls of far. Google, have you lost it? What brains did you had? Well, uh, what sum did you have in mind, Sergeant? Well, I'd, uh, I'd bet $10. Well, perhaps your friends would like to pool their bets. I got a buck fifty. Thirty-one cents, but Jed owes me a dime. I might get fifteen bucks together. Well, look, spark plug isn't mercenary, but unless I can get a respectable bet, gentlemen, the race is off. Ooh. Well, when we get the guy on top. Oh, get get oh. Unfortunately, I will not be here on visitor's day, as I'm being sent by the general on special guard duty to Saddleback Lodge in the Big Smokies. Nothing. Sounds like we're getting a fish. After all the angling we've done at the army camps. Yes, a very big fish. Saddleback Lodge. What's up there? Nothing but country and lots of it. Well, I've known for some time about Professor Waldo James and his radio control device. And also that he was hiding out in the Smokies. But where? Here it is. This Snuffy Smith looks as strong as an ox. Just about as bright. Yes, yes. Stupid, but important. Exactly the man we want. And so, Merlene? I know. I'm going to be Eliza Murdoch again. Exactly. Now, you, you're to get the plans of that invention. And you are to destroy the completed invention. Adopted soldier boy Snuffy Smith, you are going to Saddleback Lodge, and so am I. Take the car around to the garage if there is such a place. You'll have to park under a tree over there. The barns for other things. Just as you say, mister. Oh, I'll take that, ma'am. Oh, how big. Oh, that's nothing. Uh, where to? We go to my suite. Come, soldier boy. <laughs> so, this is the bridal yes, chamber. Nice place. That's dumb. Oh, it's charm. Charming. So oh, lovely. Well, adopted soldier man, so you don't know me. No. But I did know you at once. You know me? From your photograph, foolish boy. <laughs> Why, it is me. Now, of course, you know I'm Eliza Murdoch. Well, how do you do? What? All those presents. Presents? Cigars, yeah. candies, all my letters to you. And your sweet answers. What? <laughs> Eliza Murdoch <laughs> and her adopted soldier men. Snuffy Smith. Look. What an adorable name, Snuffy. 
promoted to a sergeant, too. You didn't tell me you were this boy. I didn't. Sergeant Gatling! Sergeant Gatling! Hey, has anybody seen the sergeant? Oh. Yeah. Hey, Snuffy, have you seen the Sarge? Nope. Maybe the Wuffler skunk snuck off into the hills with other Wuffler skunks. <laughs> yeah, maybe he did. <laughs> so you're not Snuffy Smith? Oh, I guess Snuffy sent you my picture. I'm Sergeant Gatling. That's Snuffy out there. I'll send him up to you. Don't go, Sergeant. I'm glad Snuffy sent your picture. And now, I'm going to adopt you. You mean you're going to adopt me instead of Snuffy Smith? Yes. Oh. But let's keep it a secret from him. Oh, yes, but I gotta... Well, the boys are calling me. I gotta get out there now. Well, goodbye, big hunko man. I'll see you soon. Oh, sooner. You heard yourself. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Beautiful vacation spot, isn't it? Yes, indeed. A great place for fun. Sporting events. Sporting events? I speak as a horse owner. My interest uh, is in racing. Oh, why, you're Barney Google, aren't you? That's right. My name is Bowler. This is Mr. Hurdle. I do. We had a two-mile horse race scheduled for tomorrow. You see, the soldiers have a fleet racing mule, a marvel of endurance. And your entrance? Spark plug, of course. <laughs> is he dead? <laughs> no, you see, he's just unhappy. The soldiers couldn't match my bet, even though it only cost $500. Hmm, that's too bad. The boys must be disappointed. Suppose I match your bet, Mr. Google. I accept, sir. Of course, we can post these bets with some responsible person. Why be so commercial? Let's make it a gentleman's bet. Just that it's customary. Uh, the cash or it's equipped. Hmm. Spark plug will be my pledge. <laughs> <laughs> I'd prefer something more commercial. Haven't you an interest in some tangible property? Google, you underwitted idiot. Don't put up what you're thinking of. Oh, you can find $500 to finish it somewhere in the United States or Canada. Gentlemen, you come to my room. I will pledge my half interest in a very valuable mechanism. Come on. Google, you flighty-minded nitwit, your poor old feeble brain, what's to become of us? I always carry sleeping powders, not only for myself, sometimes for others. It's <laughs> the first time I've ever slipped them to a horse. Poor old Sparky hasn't a chance anyway. I like to make sure. Especially when it means holding up that rocket. Our rocket. Wait till the chief hears about this. <laughs> and that the sergeant in charge of the guard held the stakes. My sergeant. Just the same, Gatling was an inspiration. He has a strong sense of duty. No matter what pressure they put on him, when the mule wins, we'll get our money back and the agreement that makes us half owners of the great radio rocket. And then how we'll move in. Here you are, beautiful. A lovely carrot for good old spark blood. Administered before the race. Just before. It works pretty fast. And don't let anybody see you pass the carrot. Who would suspect a frail woman of slipping Sparky or Mickey Finn? <laughs> <laughs> Is he all set, Dickie? I can hardly wait to collect my winnings. Hey, how do you feel? Listen. I never worry about race day. I used to ride three or four horses a day, every day. But did you ever ride a winner? Did I ever ride a winner? <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are, boys. <laughs> Don't let me down, Sparky, old baby. I wonder who's going to be put on guard duty. I hope it won't be me. I don't want to miss this race. Mm -hmm. well, don't worry, boys. I'll be on guard duty while the race is on. Ain't you going to see it? No, I'm going to guard the barn. Gee, well, think of all the money you got down. That's just the trouble. If one of you men are on guard duty, you'll be thinking about your money and P-40, in case anybody tries to pull anything. But not me. I'm in charge of guard detail here, and I'll be here, win, lose, or draw. All right, beautiful. Do your stuff. We're going to leave it all to you. Both horses must be at the post in five minutes. All right, hop to it, boys. Please, Come on, Give them a good ride, kid. P-40 can't lose. Oh, Snuffy! Do you want 
to see Sparky win? I sure do. Well, there's nothing better for a horse than carrots. So full of vitamins. They'll make them run. You try it with Sparky. Here, give it to him. I see the horse make a hog of himself over carrots. A heap of times. Be sure to give it to Sparky. If it's the last and final thing I do. Well, Sparky looks pretty good to me. He looks... Just take another look, will you? Oh, you mean you want me to put the horse to spray and bring out the little race when he brings the cap? Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't start that again. I was just kidding. Here, Sparky. Yeah, I got a little hey. tag. Wait a minute. What's that? Uh, that's a carrot I got for Sparky. It's got vitamins. Look, haven't you heard about priorities? Okay, Sparky, let's go. I'll take over. You go watch the race. Come on, boys. What's it all about? Dad, the race. It means so much to us. Oh, yes, the race, the race. Well, they're all here except your sergeant. Now, if you could just entice him out here. I'm so lonely. There's nobody out in front but a crowd. Come on. Oh, no, no, I gotta stay here. But nothing ever happens away off here. Oh, yes, guard duty happens. You're a very stubborn boy. Me? And I've done so much for you. I heard you bet too much money on the mule. <laughs> I get a kick out of that. It's been naughty of me, but I did it for you. I gave Sparky a carrot. Well, carrots are good for him. He's got a lot of vitamins. But this carrot contained sleeping powder. <clears throat> uh, sleeping powder? It was so Sparky will lose and you will win. Isn't it funny? <laughs> yeah, very funny. <laughs> you better go now. Go on. Aren't you pleased with me? Oh, yes, very pleased. I'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. See you tonight. Yes. Oh, she was... Oh! champion looks a little sluggish, doesn't he? I'm waiting for him to start yawning. <laughs> Sparky liked the carrot? Yep. And he ate it? No. Then how do you know he liked it? Saw so the sergeant eat it. We are in favor of Sparkplug? Of course. Sparky just can't lose. I like the mule. Dad. Okay, this will be a two-mile race. Along the road to the main highway, along it, and back to the road leading up to the lodge. Two-mile race? Why, I could finish the rocket in that time. Yes, but Dad, we've got to win the race to be able to finish the rocket. Okay, Dinky, you all ready? Okay, Dinky, get him off. Everybody ready? Go! <laughs> We could get the plans and destroy the rocket. You stay here and shout. Come on, boys. We have to be a help for my cousin's body. Come on. Sergeant, 
You're holding the stakes, and you know within a few minutes I'll win a half interest in the rockets. You better be part of yourself. Be sure to win. Sure. Well, I will see about that. After the race. States and Kennedy. Professor, how's it coming? Coming along very nicely. 
It'll be ready all right by the time the ordnance experts arrive, if my partner will please, uh, what do you call it, uh, scram. Look here, Professor. This is a wonderful contribution to our war effort. It finished with production speed. And no bottleneck. Where's my jug? <laughs> Hello. It worked. What worked? Well, I just dropped a penny in the well and I made a wish that... What did you wish? <laughs> Was it about me? No, I'd better not tell you. It might not come true. Oh, uh, Professor, if there's anything I can, I can do for you, well, just speak up. Thank you. Uh, could you get me a drink? A drink? I'll be... Yeah, you be, Professor. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. <coughs> this isn't water. Uh, no, sir. That's the only thing we got. Oh, I see. Well, uh, did they make this with the apparatus that I see around here? Y yes, sir. There ain't no other. <laughs> there should be. The apparatus is old-fashioned, inefficient, and not scientific. As a man of science, I think I'll design a, a new uh, apparatus which will produce a purer, more healthful, and a, um, <coughs> a pleasanter liquid. One that will accelerate the oxidation of trophoplasm and thus impede the demolition of the protozoa. Well, bus my khaki breeches. That's the first time book learning ever appealed to me. You should have made sure Spark Plug got the carrot. Oh, forget about Spark Plug. The try was good, even if it didn't work. Well, anyway, we're still safe. We haven't done anything that can't be explained away. We haven't done anything which can be explained away to the chief. Well, what do you suggest? I suggest let's get busy. I'm going to. Come on, let's go. Oh, yes, but, but all the soldiers bet their money on P-40. I didn't know how important it was to your father. None of the others did either. I mean, not even the Sarge. We only told it to our friends. Ouch. Oh, that wasn't what I meant anymore. Oh, oh, well, look, Julie, that girl has an eye for every man. Yes, but you didn't have to catch it. Oh, now, wait a minute, honey, be reasonable. I don't even remember speaking to her. Oh, well, there you are, Corporal. I've been looking all over for you. Well, Corporal, you seem to have a very short memory. Have you seen Sergeant Gatling? No, I haven't. Julie! I've written the directions on the last sheet. What's that, Professor? That's nothing that concerns you, Sergeant. It's a still, Sergeant. A new and improved type. Far more efficient than those I've seen here. So it is a still. I thank you to keep your hands off in it. This will not only improve the output, it'll double it. It'll double the output? Take your hands off of that. Look, Professor, I've gone all through the Smokies for years and broken up stills. And here you are, teach him to build a bigger and better one. Bless my soul. So I am. Then now, what started you on this idea, Neil? Really, I, I don't know. I became interested as a scientist and... Uh, oh, bless my soul. Pardon me, I've got to get back to work on the rocket. 
There you go, Sergeant. Sticking your snout in the wrong sty again. Yeah, with your permission, Professor, I'll take charge of these plans. Take them, burn them up, tear them up. I don't know why I've wasted so much time. You revenue! I don't feel so frisky. Poor boy. From the sleeping powders you took? Uh, the sleeping powders you gave me. I gave them to a horse. Well, they were too strong for a horse. They nearly put me to sleep. I was knitting that for you. Oh, pair of mittens, huh? Oh, no. A sweater. It was a stretch. It was a stretch. <laughs> Take a lot of imagination. I'm sorry I was late. Professor detained me. Oh, the good Professor James? Yes, he had some plans for me. Oh, plans? Plans, yeah. Plans of an invention. Were they so important that they kept you away from little Lisa? Well, they're pretty important, all right. Some people give a lot of money for them. I took them just to keep them out of bad hands. And I got them right here. Won't you help me? Give me your hand. Your hand? Yeah. No, both of them. Close up. Come on, let's join together by the yarn. By the yarn? Higher. Still higher. Still higher. Yes, <laughs> sir. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, wait. You're tickling. Oh, no, I, I don't like that. Get another game. I wanted to hide that jug. Sometimes you're so disappointing. So big, so handsome, and yet so ticklish. Sometimes I think you haven't awakened yet. Oh, oh I'm awake all right. I'm awake. I mean to love, to romance. You never say things to me a woman likes to hear. Oh, what things do a woman like to hear? I'll teach you. What is your first name? Homer. Homer, I'll make you a Romeo. No, 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 not that. Isn't Homer bad enough? I think you don't care for me. I didn't at first, but I do now. How cool your words are. Why don't you say adorable one? <laughs> so you don't really care. I do, adorable one. How sweet that was. You're learning fast. Tell me more like this. Light of my life. Song of my heart. That precious little chippy monk. Light of my life. Song of my heart. My precious little chippy monk. Light of my life. Song of my heart. My precious little... Oh, go on. Go on. Tell me more. Go on. Go on. Go on. Get it. Uh, Oh, that's what I'm going to repeat. Get big. <laughs> Ram. Pretend you were a big bad boy and I'm angry with you. <laughs> you beg my forgiveness and bend it knee. Oh. <laughs> Won't you do that for me? No. Tell me, if I don't forgive you, you'll shoot yourself. <laughs> you'll cut your throat. You'll jump off a bridge. <laughs> it tickles. It is so little to ask if you really care. If you don't forgive me, I'll shoot myself. I'll cut my throat. I'll jump off a bridge. It's so little to ask if you really care. I would forget to do it. Come on, get it. <laughs> Your little honeysuckle blossom forgives her big soldier lover. Now say, nestle in my arms, heart of my heart, my only one. Nestle in my arms. Oh, I said no, I can't. Oh, you're angry with me. Oh, you frighten me. No. Give me a sign that you're not angry with me. Give me a kiss, big kiss. Oh, no, I can't do that. 
I can't oh. do that. The guy was... The fear of losing you hasn't nerved me. I faint. Wait a minute, wait Give a minute. Give me my smelling salt. Oh, oh my... my... <laughs> Honey bunch, are you all right? Oh, can't I be your little cheeky <laughs> monk? Oh. <laughs> hey, you, you bogacious idiot! You shitless skunk! You feel me pretty, you... You bogacious idiot, you... They want me! I mean... Turn me loose! With an engine? Oh, Sergeant! Sergeant! On the... Oh, you... Oh! 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 Louise! Now, you've had plenty of time to carry this job out, and what have you done? Nothing. Now, see here, man. I want this job carried through. Oh, hello. Oh. Got a plan. Courtesy of Sergeant Gutling. Hello, my lady. That's very nice. That's very nice. You idiot. You rattle-brained woman, do you know what you've done? You've brought me the plan for a whiskey still. It's high time that I took charge. You three not only miserably failed to carry out my commands, you've actually furnished the Americans with money to complete the rocket which you were sent to destroy. Within a few hours, the Washington experts will be here to witness the test flight of the rocket. Before then, it must be destroyed. Well, that's great, but how are we going to get into the barn? We've been trying for a week. You leave that to me. You get us in that barn, and I guarantee to blow that rocket so high. Now, listen, stupid. The important thing is we get the plants first, then we'll take care of the rocket. Come on, Snuffy. You know I'm nervous, and I'll need some rehearsing. Go ahead, pretend you're the general. Oh, such granny talk. Why should you be nervous? Well, I'm not used to receiving medals. Oh, you ain't got no medal yet, so far as I can see. Well, I will when the rocket's a success. Go on, pin it on me. Oh, that feels like a dimension idiot. Well, keep on with the rest of it. You're supposed to be a foreign general, and you know what the customary procedure is. No, uh, I don't know the... Uh... The customary procedure? Yeah, what you said. Well, the foreign general is supposed to kiss the man on both cheeks. Oh, you mean I gotta pick you on your jaws? Certainly, and hurry up. There's gonna be a reception at the White House soon getting underway. Hurry up. Oh, I beg your pardon. Am I intruding? Yes. Well, break it up! Yeah, come here, come here. There's going to be a demonstration of that rocket any time now, and I want every man here to guard it. Get inside. <laughs> Get inside. Chipless skunk. Contagious engine. Gonna keep on playing mumbly peg all your life? Thank you. 
something mysterious going on around here. Here, come on, get in here. If anybody comes, we get them red-handed. Come on, hurry. with the rocket. Why shouldn't it be? Snuffy's in there guarding it. I'll him out here guarding it. What could happen? Get away from me. Demonstrate. 
operation must be underway. And it looks very good. No need. Sorry that things haven't gone according to schedule. Oh, but make no excuses. We thought it excellent. Why, uh, indeed, yes, Colonel. I shall be happy to recommend it to the War Department. You will? Indeed, we will. Will? You see, that's the trouble with you spies. All you think can get away with is the order piece of salary and the Brady case. The country today is order for a fatal piece of people free in Washington. And that's the cause of major breaks. And don't worry, practice with the Kettle Hippos. The Cattle Law is a stout event. And they don't need to slaughter you back to Sullivan. Hey, wait a minute. We found a crime that was creased out on the last Wednesday. So crowd over to the office here with Kay, and we came back here today. Oh, a funny man, huh? No it's man. all your fault. It not, you got me in there. No you man. got me up in there. You push your button. No, you all want to run. You. Hello, my little chippy monk. Oh, go take a jump. Go, a jump. Oh. go take two jumps. Wait a minute, Stockton. Don't leave me now. I never needed you so bad in my life. That's the way out. Okay, let me get yours. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, you'll do your share. You go to Washington, do your bit. <laughs> well, there's your little old aeroplane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that reminds me, you shiftless skunk. You put me in there. You started the whole thing. Kind. Oh, I told you you're not kind. I told you I told you inside the door. I told you what? How about getting you and Snuffy on the rocket? Say, ain't I having enough trouble as it is? Oh, please, Sergeant Gatley. <laughs> Come on now, look pleasant, Sarge, even if it hurts. <laughs> Come on, baby! Come on, baby. 